everyone and welcome to another newscast. My name is Sam Healy and in this video we're going to tell you all of the latest news about our projects as well as the company. And as always, if you don't want to watch the entire video, you can just skip to the parts that interest you by utilizing the timestamps in the description below. This week we don't have any further information on Reichbusters Project Vril, Steam Watchers, or Darkest Dungeon the board game, but let's get to everything else. For Joan of Arc today, as a reminder, the Pledge Manager is going to close tomorrow, February 17th. So this is your final chance to complete your pledges and make sure you have your uh, correct shipping address on file. Today we have for you the English and the French Teutonic Knights books for your digital perusal. We're now in the last two weeks before we go to production, so we will have the documents open to comments until Friday, February 19th but we won't be able to assess anything that comes in after that. Of course, we thank you for your willingness to help us ensure that we have all of our T's crossed and our I's dotted. For Solomon Kane today, product will be arriving this week and next at the hubs as they clear customs. Quartermaster Logistics reports having received the product yesterday on the 15th, while Spiral Galaxy is reporting that the product should be with them on Friday, February 19th. Meebo Logistics and VR Distribution are both reporting that product will be with them next Wednesday, February 24th. Meebo Logistics will send out address verification emails this Friday, February 19th, so be on the lookout for that. So all in all, fulfillment is still rolling out smoothly. Of course, we will be in touch if anything else arises. For Enchanters today, just a very short update to say that if you have yet to receive your ultimate pledge, please contact us. All these pledges are reported as having shipped out fully. So if you have not yet received yours, please reach out to us and let us know at support at mythicgames.net. Our customer support team will be glad to help find where your shipment is and make sure it gets to you as quickly as possible. For Super Fantasy Brawl today, hopefully by now you've seen the announcement that we are bringing Super Fantasy Brawl back to Kickstarter with Round 2 in March 2021. We want to make absolutely clear that this isn't a new season, just more champions. The Kickstarter will include everything that the original Kickstarter had, plus three new expansions, each with three new champions. These nine new champions will bring a lot more options for players to choose their teams as they expand upon existing concepts and push the boundaries of the arena with more specialized builds and advanced tools. These additions to the roster not only enhance the variability of gameplay, but they also enrich the quirky and colorful universe of the game. Well, what about plans for retail that you had, you may be asking? we will still be taking the game to retail. Unfortunately, the pandemic has posed several challenges for everyone and the plans we had needed to be delayed and adapted. So in the meantime, we'll begin fulfilling retailer orders along with the Kickstarter. And there will also be several retail pledge levels to help solidify our commitment to supporting the retailers. We still plan on fully supporting retail with tournaments and an organized play program as soon as the virus-related challenges have been overcome. This week for Hell the Last Saga, we wanted to update you on the progress of the game, as well as give you an overview of a major rule change that we have recently made. Some have legitimately questioned as to the progress of the project, and some have doubts about the estimated delivery date of the game in June. This date has indeed been compromised, and here are the reasons why. First, when we proposed this project, we had a story, a visual universe, a system, scenarios, and above all, the intention to offer you a new narrative experience. We were particularly sensitive to your feedback during the campaign, especially on the need for exceptional writing, which led us to hire, thanks to the success of the project, recognized and talented authors to carry this adventure. Even if we already had a somewhat similar experience with Solomon Kane's narrative, this time it's all about original writing, with constant back and forth between the writers, who are also all gamers by the way, and the game designers. 
Second, in order to enrich the game, we decided to give this process all the time it needs, even if it extends past the expected development time. Thus, to reinforce the twists and surprises we have created, secret game elements that were not foreseen during the Kickstarter campaign, such as new cards, new maps, and many other things, that will be hidden in sealed envelopes and be revealed during the saga. It's difficult for us to communicate about these elements without spoiling anything, but rest assured that the extra time needed to complete them will allow us to transport you to situations and places you would never expect. Third, and still on the production side of things, we've opted for another solution for the saga book. Initially, the paragraphs of the 13 songs were supposed to be included in a rather imposing spiral-bound book. The evaluations of this component following the first tests proved to be revealing, though. The saga book was bulky, heavy, and therefore difficult to pass between the players between the game. Even worse, it was impossible not to see some elements of a later song and thus to be spoiled even inadvertently because the book has some rather evocative illustrations and diagrams. To overcome these flaws, we've changed the format of the saga book and divided it into 14 separate booklets, one for each song plus a special extra one. As such, in order to play a song, you're only going to need to unpack the contents of the song box and take the corresponding booklet, which is lighter and easier to handle and gives no indication, even unintentionally, of what to expect later on. Lastly, there is the issue of balance and consistency over the long term. Having 13 heroes coexist for the duration of a long adventure while preserving the interest of each of their narrative arcs as well as working on a consistent evolution of their capacities has proved to be a challenge that has become one of our main priorities. Numerous in-house tests forced us to modify certain rules whose effects were not relevant in the long term to achieve the goal we had set for ourselves. These changes will also have an impact on the external testing campaign currently underway, as beta testers will have to verify and refine the tests they have already started by integrating these often major changes. All these problems even though they all have solutions, are just a sample of what can impact the development of such an ambitious project. And as we can't scale down this ambition, we've decided to revise our schedule and postpone the delivery for an estimated date of November to December of 2021. We understand that this decision may cause some disappointment, but please rest assured that the reasons given, which have nothing to do with the current pandemic crisis, are solely related to our will and determination to deliver the most accomplished game possible in order to meet our own expectations, not to mention yours, and without any compromise with regard to production constraints. To illustrate the development process that led us to making such major changes, the most iconic example is certainly the prayer system. When we created the prayer system, we had two ideas in mind. The first being that it was thematic. We wanted to represent the stakes of each hero's particular faith. The second being gameplay. We wanted to offer modifiers that, when used accordingly, mitigated the difficulty of some tests. During the tests covering the first third of the saga, we realized that the prayer action was only very rarely carried out. The restrictions before it was performed, for example, the need to have a specific location to pray, the absence of a hero of a different belief, and effects only applied to heroes of the same belief, compared to the benefits obtained, were not perceived as interesting by a large majority of players. As a result, during our playtests, the prayer action was almost never planned nor utilized. We have therefore made a major rule change that will hopefully give this action at least as many important and interesting choices as combat. We started with a new thematic approach. Even if each hero is firmly attached to their belief, the benefits of their prayer will now apply to the whole clan 
and the presence of a believer of another religion will not impact the prayer action. When we lifted these restrictions, we immediately saw a revival of interest, but it was still modest compared to the ambition we wanted to give to prayer. There was still a pure gameplay problem. You see, even if prayers offered a universal and persistent bonus from one scenario to another, players still felt that it was difficult to predict, with a lack of knowledge of following scenarios, which prayers to perform in priority. Some had an obvious immediate impact, while others seemed out of context and difficult to justify. This situation caused doubts and hesitations that impacted the player's decision to perform prayers. Do I go short-term or long-term gain? To solve this issue, we simply had to increase prayer benefits. Not by improving the effect of the prayers, although we had already slightly increased some of them at that point, but by adding an immediate benefit chosen among many. So when the hero prays, this ecstatic moment will trigger an immediate bonus effect, in addition to the persistent effect of the prayer itself. This change can be seen on the new prayer track. As you can see, the number of prayers that can be performed is no longer limited to two prayers per belief, and above all, each prayer spot describes an immediate effect. When a hero has successfully performed his prayer test, he chooses a prayer spot, immediately applies the printed effect, and then places the prayer card on it. The persistent effect of the prayer card is applied to all heroes, and the immediate effect can no longer be chosen since the spot is covered with a card. In this example, Ingvold has just performed the Raven Eyes prayer. Her owner has decided to place the prayer on the second spot, triggering the following effect immediately. Dispatch three morale between heroes. She decides to take two morale for herself, which will be useful to pay the cost of her familiar and hero cards. And one morale for Bergen. The other possible immediate effects are removed one wound from each hero. Dispatch three morale between three heroes of your choice, including the hero who played the prayer, of course. Take a look at the next fate card and replace it at the top of its deck so that you can anticipate its harmful effects. A hero of your choice gains one plus one action bonus token. A hero of your choice gains a bonus token of plus one dice during the test. And finally, discard one prayer placed on this track which allows you to release an immediate effect printed on the location underneath the card you have discarded, offering more flexibility. This major update has paid off, as prayers are now a critical element in the success of a scenario and provide players who play them with important choices and decisions. In fact, it's now difficult to overcome some scenarios if you ignore the prayer action altogether. To support this aspect, we have also increased the willpower of certain heroes that we wanted to turn into champions of their belief. We certainly hope that this example has shed more light on the development process and our desire to push gameplay and thematics to their maximum potential. <laughs> All right. He's starting to suspect some stuff, I think. So I'm having to be a little bit more kind of sneaky so um you guys make sure you help me out here and keep this on the down low i think he's reading some of the comments on our videos so um keep it on the down low okay um don't don't say anything that could give him the idea that we're doing this so this week i've got two games for you. One that I've played and I told you I was going to come back and report on. And then the second one is one that I've uh, received from a publisher who's made, who, who, who made one of my favorite games of all time. Uh, it's called uh, Deception Murder in Hong Kong. So uh, I've got one of those. I haven't played it yet. I've just got it in, but I think it's going to be cool. and It's going to be fun. So I wanted to share it with you and you can check it out if you want. All right. So first one is this Little bad boy right here. Anyway, Top Gun, the strategy game. Yes, I'm a, I'm a Top Gun fan, and I love the movie. 
So it's just been one of those things that I've always really enjoyed. So when I got this and I saw, well, first of all, when I saw it, I was like, me must have. And uh, so I, I called a buddy of mine that owns the store and spoke in. And I said, hey, can you order this for me? And I'll come over and pick it up. That was like six months ago. I'm sorry, Mike. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It took so long. So he did so, and he held it in the box for like six months, waiting for me to get over there. So then I did, and I went over and picked it up, and I was able to play it a couple days ago. <laughs> and uh, dude, nostalgia factor hit the roof with this thing. They had so many cool things going on uh, in, in the two different phases. So basically the way this game works, I, di I didn't really have much information about it when I talked about it first time, but basically how this game works, you start off by playing a volleyball game, um, on the board and whoever gets to, um, there, there's, you have this deck of volleyball cards and there's three whiff cards in them. There's also set cards and spike cards and bump cards and so forth, which allow you to move the ball around on your grid. You can only move it three times um, before you send it or twice. And then the third one has to be over the net, like volleyball. Duh. Okay, so the, the, every time you find one of their, your opponent's whiff cards, which is basically, you know, it's a point, um, you get to draw a card or a movement tile from a generic set, you also you start that that can be used during the uh, the sortie phase, the the for, sortie phase, no, the fighter school phase. Sorry. Um, anyway, so whoever is able to to uh, uh, find the three widths of their opponent first is the winner of the volleyball game, and then they can choose whether or not they're going to be the attacker or the defender as they fly in the hop phase or the fighter school phase. And so then you, uh, you can actually, the boards are small enough to where you can, you can have them set up together so you don't have to tear one down and set the other one up, which is one of the things I was worried about, but they, they handle it very well. Size is everything. So you can, have, you can leave the, the, the volleyball game set up and then set up your, your sortie or your hop board over here. And so you set that up randomly using the uh, hop or sortie cards. I can't remember what you call them. I'm bad with that. Anyway, you can set that up and then you fly a sortie and, and you're either the attacker is supposed to be getting a target lock, which gives them five points, or the defender has to fly around to all these different checkpoints. Each checkpoint is worth two points. And once they've gotten through three of them, that can also end the hop, which means that they've scored six points. So you can score more points as the defender, um, but it's harder because getting that target lock, not that difficult, as I found out really fast. <laughs> and don't fly near the board unless you abs uh, near the edge of the board unless you absolutely have to. That's a really easy target lock for your person, just like the movie, because you know Mav went down below the deck and he was disqualified and all this kind of stuff. Anyway, I super enjoyed this game. Next question is probably going to be, is it because of the nostalgia? Yes, probably. But this is a really fun game um, that takes some really basic elements of gaming and made it super thematic to match the movie almost to a T. Um, I'm, I'm very glad they didn't have a love scene phase in this um, because that would have been awkward. But the volleyball and the fighter scene phase, awesome. This is Top Gun um, in a box. And, and I say that light, lightheartedly because there's a lot of nostalgia factor going on to that statement. But super enjoyed this. You need to go check it out. Now, this next game is from uh, Jolly Thinkers. Now, Jolly Thinkers uh, is the publishing company... Uh, it's Asian publishing company. I don't know exactly where they're from. I want to say Hong Kong, um, but I'm not absolutely sure. So I apologize for not knowing that. But they have sent me this game called Cheese Thief. And Cheese Thief is another social deduction game, but it's like super cute. Um, like that big fat chubby mice is like eyeing that piece of cheese like, oh yes, you will be mine. You know, that kind of thing. Uh, but anyway, I haven't played this yet, but I really want to give it a try. Uh, I've tried uh, Deception Murder in Hong Kong recently. Uh, Kong Hong. <laughs> I've tried Deception Murder in Hong Kong recently, and it went over super well. 
So I want to try this with kind of the same group and to see how it, it goes because this is definitely a lighter game. You simply are, are basically, there's you're going to be getting um, cards that either have that little chubby mouse on there uh, that has the cheese in his hand or you have a bunch of sleepy head cards. So you're either going to be a sleepy head or you're going to be the guy that wants to steal the cheese. And so you all go to sleep at night around your cheese, protecting it, but one of you has the intent to steal it. And so you roll your dice, six-sided dice, and that is the hour that you're going to wake up. When you wake up, if you're the cheese thief, then you're going to you're going to take that cheese and hide it somewhere to where other everybody can't see it. But if you're the sleepy head, you're just going to look around and then you can look at other people's stuff and I haven't read the rules completely, but this looks like it's really, really fun. Each game only takes about 10 minutes, so you can play multiple, kind of like um, uh, the one where you ask the questions, uh, the spy game. I can't remember the game. Um, anyway, it was almost there, but it, it's not there. Anyway, this looks like it's going to be super fun. I'm really looking forward to giving it a try. So if, if you have the... I don't even know if this is out yet. Um, it... It looks like it's a produced copy, so it's, it doesn't look like a prototype. So you may be able to get your hands on this. Go check it out. Um, the company is really good. They're really nice people as well. And uh, Deception Murder of Hong Kong is one of my favorite games of all time. So I'm looking forward to having another social game from them that's lighter. Um, so, cheese thief. Let's get back to the other guy. Bye. So remember that Leo will be live tomorrow at 6 p.m. GMT, 1 p.m. Eastern Time on our YouTube channel with a live Q&A in English and at 8.30 p.m. Paris Time with a live Q&A in French. So tune in if you have any questions or you just want to see what he might spoil. He kind of does that a lot. But that's it for this week. Stay home, stay safe, play some games while you're at it. We'll see you on the flip side. Take care.